Okay, uh, so maybe we can start. I don't know whether we should wait more or. Uh, um, okay, so. Let me recall a little bit what we what we talked about last time, um, and maybe give you a small plan of today. So today we'll I'll try to be uh, uh, not go into too much detail and maybe uh, give some perspectives about other problems or other related problems. So. Um, So what we what we've been discussing is again the parental system. Um, so the parental system reads like this. So we have U T U U X plus V U Y minus U Y Y. with ux plus dy equals zero, u and u, uh, u of x, y goes to some u Euler of x when y e goes to infinity. Okay, so this is this is the system. Uh, the u Euler and the p Euler they are given, and just from looking at the equation and looking at it when y goes to infinity, you also deduce that u Euler which is just a function of x. If you look at this, equal minus this is some sort of compatibility between these two things. Okay. And you can see this as just the trace of the Euler equation that normally you are solving uh, so again, like here, the idea is that we are solving Navier-Stokes in the upper half plane. Here we have Prandtl, and here we have Euler. And y, y equal infinity here corresponds to the trace of Euler on the boundary. Okay. Okay. So this is the system. And, and normally, you, we, we have to take an initial data, some u0 of xy. Now, um, just let me recall what are the, what are the questions that we, we discussed about this system. Um, so some of the questions we discussed was uh, the, the derivation so how you derive this from navier stokes right the derivation from from navier stokes um, somehow the idea behind the system itself is that you consider Navier Stokes here. You consider Navier Stokes in the half plane. Um, so Navier Stokes. So I'll be writing everything in 2D. So Navier Stokes, I will write the velocity as being UV. Okay u will be the first component. So the u you see here is a scalar that corresponds to the first component of the Navier-Stokes. <coughs> so then if you look at Navier-Stokes,
Okay, so this will be this will be your Navier-Stokes um, system. Okay, because I mean it's it's uh, it's solving Navier-Stokes in the half space here. So um, the the domain omega is the set. Okay. Um, so then, um, <coughs> when the viscosity goes to zero, when the viscosity goes to zero, we expect solutions of the Navier-Stokes to converge to converge to a solution of Euler. When the viscosity goes to zero, so Navier-Stokes becomes Euler. Of course, now this convergence, I would say, in this framework is one of, I mean, it's, it's a major open problem in fluid mechanics. As of now, uh, formally, formally, this becomes this. But proving that solutions of Navier-Stokes converge to solution of Euler, we discussed this already. This is uh, this is still an open problem. So um, so the problem is that for Euler you cannot impose that the whole velocity vanished on the boundary. You can only impose. Um, Um, <coughs> you can only impose that the normal velocity is zero. So the normal velocity means u dot n equals zero. So u dot n here, the normal is, what is the normal? The normal is this, right? That's your normal. So this will be v. And Okay, so uh, my notation, I mean, I, my notation, there is some sort of inconsistency in the notation because the y here and the y here, they are not the same, right? So I'll try to explain this. But um, we discussed this already. Now, now, the fact that these two equations, they, they don't have exactly the same boundary condition, meaning here that only the normal component of the velocity vanishes, whereas here all the all the velocity vanishes. Um, so then, if you try to do energy estimate, you see that things do not work. And Prandtl, and that's Prandtl in 1904, proposed the following idea that there is a small layer of size square root of nu, where here you will have Euler, but here you will have Prandtl. Okay. Now, <coughs> to derive Prandtl, you have to make, um, you have to rescale. So, so instead of working with y, you introduce capital Y equal y over square root of nu. Okay, so if you introduce this scale, so you change, you go from x, y to x capital Y. This is the scale where you are seeing where you have the Euler or the Navier-Stokes equation here where you have the Prandtl system. So then, <coughs> You make this change of uh, coordinate, uh, you plug it in in that equation, and you just keep the leading order terms. So if you only keep the leading order terms, then you get this system. Okay. And then uh, what happens when, um, I mean, 
if I want, if I, if I try not to confuse you really to be precise, then I will put capital Y, then I, I will remove this capital Y, but just for the sake of uh, being precise and being consistent with the notation. Okay, so I think we, I spent some time explaining how the derivation takes place formally. Like formally again, like you, you look at the Navier-Stokes equation, you make this change of coordinate, right? You plug it in. So for instance, okay, so just the new Laplacian xy, this guy becomes new dxx plus dyy, okay? So then when you do your formal asymptotics, this term you drop it because this is small and you keep this one. So that's why only the dyy remains, okay? That's clear for everyone? Uh, sorry, uh, yeah. uh, what about the second term? The second term, you mean what? The, the, the y component of the second term. The v. Right. So the v term, okay, the v term, so the v term, so, so, so here the equation for the Navier-Stokes is a, is a vector, whereas here this is an equation for a scalar, right? So it's an equation for a scalar, so where is, so something was lost in, the, in this process, but that's, that's just coming from the second equation. The second equation of Navier-Stokes, when you rescale to leading order term, the leading order term will be the fact that dp over dy is zero, right? So, so basically the the second equation, you replace it by this one. To leading order term, the second equation becomes this one. The fact that P doesn't depend on Y, and that's why the PE there you see is just a function of X, doesn't depend on Y, right? So that's, that's, coming, from, that's coming from the second equation, and it is also consistent with, uh, with physics, the fact that we don't expect the pressure to move fast in the boundary layer. So there is also some um, physical intuition behind this. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so <coughs> let, let me give you now today a plan about, um, a plan about what we are going to what I'm intending to do. So I see many new faces, so that's why I'll, I'll, I'll try to go slightly slower. But so, so Monday, Monday what we did, Monday we looked at the stationary, stationary parental. Today we'll do the evolution. So Monday we looked at the problem without this term and, uh, so, sorry, I mean like the, the parental equation, you, you get rid of the UT and then you look at the, the stationary problem. Today we'll be looking at the evolution, but Monday the two questions we looked at were mostly two, uh, the singularity formation or like separation, like usually for parental, we don't use the word blow up, but uh, the word we use is separation, which I think makes sense because like that, that's what we discussed Monday. What happens really at the time of separation, uh, everything is still well defined. I mean, there's no, no, I mean, 
nothing going to infinity, but it's more like a derivative which is going to zero. So it <coughs> and it's called separation, separation of boundary layer. So this was one of the results we discussed. And then I discussed a few other results about the validity of Prentol. Validity of Prentol meaning the fact that Navier-Stokes converge to Prentol in the sense that Navier-Stokes converge to Prentol. Of course, na normally what you would like to say is more like Navier-Stokes converge to Euler and the Prentol. Um, yes, so that's, that's th those are the type of results we are interested in. Um, but somehow, usually, whenever we look at these kind of problems, we'll be mostly interested in uh, rescaling space. Somehow we are rescaling space so that we are mostly trying to focus on what happened here. OK? Um, but I mean, there are also results that do uh, there are results that do that Navier-Stokes go to Euler plus Prentor. It depends how you state it. Okay, so these are the type of things we tried to discuss uh, last time. I mostly spent time talking about this problem. I mostly discussed this one last time, and this was mostly a result, recent result I have with uh, Anlor Dalibar. We talked about this one. Um, today, the, the plan is to do more or less the same thing, but for the evolution Prentol. But um, I, will, I will try to discuss slightly more this point. Um, there are a few, wor few works that we have on this. Um, so I, I, I can tell you. So, so OK. Uh, so here we have one and two. Here we have result with uh, with Sharf Colo and Tej Gul and Slim Brahim. Okay, um, I will discuss a little bit, but I'll talk a little bit more also about <coughs> the validity of the Prentor. Um, so validity or invalidity, like whether it, it is valid or not valid. Um, OK, so that will be the plan. Any questions? No? OK. So um, Monday, when, when, when we discussed the validity of Prentol, I mean, I mentioned these, uh, all, 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 I mean, the point that all these results are very, very recent. I mean, most of them are just preprints, not, not even yet published. Um, but for the validity of Prentol, one of the main, um, I would say, geometric condition, one of the condition on the profile on U is that u is positive. Like in this type of result, um, I mean, the, I would say the, the main assumption or the main thing that, um, that is needed is that u is positive. Um, of course, there are many other things. Uh, I mean, for instance, I, I mentioned like, uh, for this result of uh, uh, Samir Ayer and Yang Gu, or another result of David Gerard Vare with uh, Yasunuri Mayak Mayakawa. Another assumption is that uh, x is small. So x has to be uh, in a small interval. Um, but but the, main, the main thing is that u is positive and that they work in Sobolev. 
so bole regularity right so um so it's so bole regularity u is positive if you are in this kind of condition um, you expect that solution of Navier-Stokes will converge to uh, solution of Brenton. Now, um, it turns out that similar result, I mean, like similar logic or similar um, similar results for the evolution Prentol do not hold. And I'll try to explain this a little bit, meaning that if 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 we follow so I'm trying to make this parallel because I think this is interesting and um, I mean for me this is a problem like even physically it, it means um, it, it poses some problems um, so, so, so again if, if we look at I like to make this comparison between the two problems. If we look at so, if I if we look at the stationary problem, stationary parental, this problem, I mean, like if you want to prove existence for this equation, um, like local local existence meaning small x. Again, here when we look at um, the stationary prob problem, we are, we are thinking of x as being, playing the role of time. And the main assumption that is used is that u is positive. u is positive except, of course, at the boundary where it has to vanish here, but inside it is positive. So then when u is positive, this behaves like, a st like an evolution problem and then you can solve. And the results of uh, go higher and uh, David Girard Vare with Mayakawa I forgot the yeah, so they more or less tell you that um, Navier-Stokes converges to this on a short on a short x. So for some short interval in x, you can prove convergence, and all what you need is Sobolev regularity. So these are very interesting results. Of course, I mean, I think th there is a lot of improvement for this result yet. Uh, so, but, uh, but they are very, I find them very, very important results. I mean, they show like that we can justify, we can, do, we can justify the derivation in Sobolev regularity. Now, <coughs> if we try to make a parallel with the evolution problem, if we try to make a parallel with the evolution problem, uh, Prentol, the Prentol system, we have we can also solve Prentol in Sobolev regularity if we have so uh, so the evolution Prentol evolution Prentol uh, is well posed in Sobolev if my profile is monotone okay so um, if it is increasing then I can solve in I can solve in Sobolev right So again, what correspond in, in the stationary case, in the stationary case, somehow the assumption that you need to get local existence 
is positivity of u, it is understood by the fact that you want to see it as some evolution in x. That same assumption here in the evolution problem correspond to the fact that you need u0 p to be monotone, monotone in, in y, right? You need it to be monotone in y. Okay, so then you can, you can solve Prandtl in Sobolev. Then a natural question is to say, okay, since here we have this convergence result in Sobolev, do we get the same convergence result here in Sobolev or not? And the answer is no. The answer is no. Um, <coughs> I try to explain this. And it turns out that somehow the result that correspond to this will be more like um, some result in, in a Jeuvre regularity. Right? So we even though even though here we can solve even though here we can solve for monotone profile, we can solve in, uh, in Sobolev, but the convergence requires Jeuvre regularity. Okay? Uh, let me ask you one question. Uh, okay, here you concentrate uh, to prove the profile and so on when UI was positive, no? Derivative in U. You had the monotonic property. Um, okay, no. The, the right Monday I talked about uh, I talked about the case where this is has a monotone. Uh, uh, right here, here. Okay, so the monotone, the monotone. The, uh, right. So in in the paper with Anlor about separation. So that's another okay. in the paper. Oh, with Anlor about the separation, we also assume that we are monotone. And the reason, the reason there is that, the reason there, I can re-explain it. So if... No, it's okay, it's just... Uh, no, no, but okay, so l j just to re-explain it. Um, so this, for instance, this is a profile where U is positive. So think about this as um, this is y and this is u, right? So you start like that. You can go. Now, if you start with a profile like this, it's maybe as you are solving, this touches here, right? So, so then the separation is not happening at this point, but is going to happen here. Okay, you have been proved this or, or not? Do you have examples? Uh, I don't think, I don't think there are. Okay, is there numerics uh, in this? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I don't think there are, uh, but, 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 but somehow, uh, right, so I, I, th I think this is kind of things where, I mean, I will compare to some of the results on uh, water waves where people prove uh, splash singularity. I was thinking about that. Yeah, I mean, it's more like, it's more like in the spirit. Even because, uh, yeah, so I think the profile when you touch down is a slightly different, the splash singularity is more singular, maybe it's more of a, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think... The uh, very something uh, which start to turn, uh, okay, so it's, uh, it's like uh, a wave. <laughs> you, you think about the result of Fefferman? Yeah, yeah, those, those type of results, so yeah. I, th I, think, I think this is very similar to those. I mean, one can... But, but, but like in terms of physics, physically... It's an analytic uh, expansion. Uh, uh, for space singularity, or maybe I'm wrong. This was maybe the first paper. It's they work in the analytic world. And uh, okay, not necessary. No, the 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 splash singularity itself doesn't require analytic. But like in the course of the proof, 
they use some somehow but but the result at the end doesn't i mean like, I, I, th I think that's how um but 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 here here like for for this problem I, I don't think you will need anything like analytic because like whenever you talk about the whenever we talk about the stationary parental mm -hmm. whenever we talk about stationary parental I, I don't think the analyticity is used, is used. Yeah. all all what is used is really this so that you think about it as an evolution problem um but it's true that this kind of question are very natural. Um, but, but, but again, here, the, the, the monotonicity in the result with an lore is more or less to avoid these kind of things so that the separation only happens here. But do you think uh, the picture would be the same? Like, uh, if you symmetrize the things, you know, with uh, what do you mean? Uh, you, 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 at the touchdown, the derivative is zero. Here, yes. right. When it touches, it, it, it touches like that. The derivative is zero. Right. So do you think? Uh, okay. So it looks a bit similar than the above, or, the maybe, or maybe different, different style, or it would be uh, different singularity. Or you, you haven't looked at. It. I'm not sure that there are. Uh, I, I I can have a look and tell you. Um, no, no, it's okay. So go ahead. No, no, but okay. I mean, that's that's a good. Uh, um, but okay, uh, uh, but you were going to speak about the blow up for frontal. So uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That we, we still don't we still don't have it yet. We still don't have it. So I'll I'll, I'll talk about uh, uh, related questions like on burgers or on. Uh, but. Okay, so, and, and, no, but today I wanted more to talk about the validity of the parental because, uh, I mean, I think maybe that's even more interest, I mean, more important. Um, okay, now, if one, if one looks at this, says, okay, positivity give us validity in the stationary problem, uh, why we don't have it here? Um, so it's true that okay for for the evolution parental for evolution parental and I mentioned these kind of things last time or maybe like in May for evolution parental we, we don't have only one type of existence result we have I would say three or four types let let me recall them very rapidly so there is so type of existence. Types of existence results. So we have results about monotone profiles, monotone in Y, but then here in Sobolev. We have another type which are analytic results. So analytic results, these are results of Kaflish San Martino. This goes back to 98. And here, analytic result, uh, Kaflish and San Martino, they prove existence for parental and also convergence of Navier stocks to parental in the analytic setup. So here we have everything is done. You have existence and the fact that Navier stocks goes to Euler parental plus parental. Everything here, um, this goes back to Kaflish San Martino. Of course, I mean, the, their result has been improved later on because uh, in their paper they were having analyticity in both X and Y. And then people realized that actually the analyticity in Y is not necessary. So you can get rid a little bit of some of the analyticity in Y. Um, okay, but uh, let me not go to that. So then there is another type, which is Jevre regularity, which is maybe more interesting. And there were few results about Jevre regularity. The first result is a result I had with uh, David Gerard Varé. And there were a few improvements afterwards. 
Uh, <coughs> I think the best result now we have is a result of uh, uh, David with, uh, with Helge. Um, and then there is another type which, there is another type in a paper we wrote with, um, with uh, actually with four author, uh, Kukavika, um, myself, Vlad Vikol, and Wonk. So, I, I mean, in this result, we, we are able to prove also uh, local well posedness in a case where we can split in X, we have regions where we are monotone in Y, monotone in Y, and regions where you are analytic. Right, so you can divide your domain into places where you are monotone, some place where you are analytic, and you can still solve. Okay, so so I mean, if you compare the type of existence result to the stationary case, I think here you have much more type of results, right? Um, now, now if we are interested, if we are interested in the validity now. So if we are interested in the validity, so trying to go from this to this, so there are results that, there's a result that goes back to around 2000 by Emmanuel Grenier, but I'm going to talk more about some of the, some work that I find interesting by Grenier, Gu, and Nguyen first to motivate, um, to motivate another result that I have with uh, David Gerard Vare and Yasunori Mayakawa. Um, <coughs> so it's a very natural question to ask um, in sobol f regularity we have in sobol f regularity we have existence for Prentor and again like the idea behind that existence, I think since we have a lot of new faces, let me re-explain re it very fast because I, thi I find it a very interesting constellation that, that is uh, easy to remember. <coughs> what is behind the Sobolev regularity, uh, the, the, um, the local well posedness in Sobolev in the monotone case? So, this result by itself goes back to Olenik. Olenik proved this result, but she proved this result using uh, so-called Croco transform, which is a, some complicated transformation that you do here, which is not very adapted to the Navier-Stokes. I mean, if you do that transformation, the Croco transform, you, you don't understand what it means on the Navier-Stokes precisely. So, um, so the idea that I had with, um, with Wonk is to find a good cancellation in the monotone case. And this cancellation comes from very simple, uh, very simple observation, by the way. So, so the observation is the following. If you write the Prentor system, if you look at your, this equation, Now, the difficulty if you try to do energy estimates, <coughs> the difficulty if you try to do energy estimate is coming from this term. If 
you try to do energy estimate or higher order energy estimate, the difficulty is coming from this term because this term loses derivatives in x. So let's say if you do, if you want to do HS estimate, so if you do HS estimate, then you want to solve, you do this in HS. Um, So, so if, if I do HS estimate, the S derivatives, they can hit here, they can hit here. Those are the two terms, this one and this one, right? Or they can hit some of them here, some of them here, or all of them here, some of them here, or all of them here, but all those other things are, are okay. They are not losing derivatives in x. Now, this guy is good because it has some energy structure and you can integrate it by part if, but this guy is problematic, okay? <coughs> now, if you take the, the same equation, but you go to the vorticity formulation, so if you take this, you look at the vorticity. Vorticity for the Prandtl means dyu. So it turns out that there is a cancellation here, so that's why you get these terms. Okay? And then if you do the same thing, plus OK. Same, OK means that um, you are not having S plus 1 derivatives in X on one term. You don't have S plus 1 derivatives in X on one term. <coughs> so then you end up with this. Now the idea that comes from that paper is, is the following cancellation, is that you say, OK, I have these two equations, this one and this one, and they have a problematic term in each one of them. So, I mean, the idea is really to kill the two problematic terms by, you make them fight together and they, they kill themselves together, right? So the idea is really to say that in the monotone case, this guy has a sign, UI has a sign, so then, if you introduce gs equal ds omega minus ds u, so somehow you take this equation and you multiply it by this coefficient. You multiply it by that coefficient and you add them together. Then these two terms, they cancel. So then what you end up with is DTGS plus U I mean plus many other plus commutators okay so you end up with something like that so uh, So that's, that's really the idea behind the uh, existence in the, in, the Sobolev, in the Sobolev case. Right? So I, I mentioned this in May a little bit, but I like it. I mean, I wanted to say it again. I mean, we, s we have uh, many new faces today. Um, but, but somehow, it makes a lot of sense to ask yourself, I mean, this is a nice structure. 
can we use it in the Navier-Stokes? Can you use it in Navier-Stokes? Can we use it to prove that Navier-Stokes converges to Prentor in the Sobolev in Sobolev regularity, right? So if I if I take an initial data for Navier-Stokes, if I take an initial data for Navier-Stokes that that more or less is coming from a monotone profile. So just take a monotone profile of Prentor, rescale it, put it in the Navier-Stokes, solve Navier-Stokes, and try to prove that that solution of Navier-Stokes will converge to Prentor. Can one do this in Sobolev regularity? Right, so this is a very natural question. So it turns out that this is wrong. Right? This is wrong in Sobolev regularity, even though we have a good a good local well posedness result in Sobolev, but we don't have convergence in Sobolev, like in the stationary case. Okay. And and basically like the the enemy was already known in the physics literature from the 40s, I mean, this, ha I mean th this is some sort of instability called the uh, Tolmy and Chishtin instability f coming from Navier-Stokes. It's really, it's really Navier-Stokes, it's really a Navier-Stokes problem. And it turns out it's, what I'm going to explain a little bit, is like a sort of destabilizing effect of the viscosity. So the reason behind the fact that this Navier-Stokes will not converge to the um, Prentol, even though we have a very nice local existence for the Prentol in the monotone case, is coming from a destabilizing effect coming from the viscosity. Okay, <coughs> so how to understand this? Um, Okay, so the, the, I mean these are papers that go back to Grenier and then Grenier, Gu, and Nguyen. I mean, like the the the, 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 the ideas. Um, <coughs> so when we do the derivation of Prentol, when we do Prentol, uh, when we do Prentol, we make the following change of coordinate: t x y we replace it by Tx this is for Prentor um, one can actually introduce another change of coordinate which is slightly more motivated by um, I, I mean the physics behind it uh, some explanation about the physics behind it is that we expect, we expect some creation of vorticity at the boundary. And if you have vorticity being created at the boundary, uh, maybe you should treat x and y in the same way. Uh, right? So there's another change of coordinate that one can do, which is slightly more democratic. you scale everything same. So what's the meaning of this? So, so it means that in X, it means that in X you are looking at, in small X, you are looking at high frequencies, right? So you're looking at frequencies like maybe, which are like one over square root of nu, right? Not, um, so, okay, if one does this, if one does this, um, if one does this change of coordinate and then 
you rewrite you rewrite your uh, you rewrite your Navier-Stokes equation. <coughs> you rewrite your Navier-Stokes equation. Actually, wh all what happens is um, is that so I'm looking at Navier-Stokes, but now I'm making this change of coordinate, right? So then what we, we end up with, so I'm, I'm not changing notations. I'm not changing notations, but you end up with this. You end up with a viscosity that now became square root of the viscosity becomes square root of nu. But besides that, everything is the same. OK? You also change time. Okay, so all, uh, everything is uh, um, just you change time, right? I mean, you can convince yourself. I mean, it's it's, it's very it's very straightforward, and of course you rescale the pressure the pressure, but the pressure is just the Lagrange multiplier, so we don't care too much now. Um, okay, now um, let's, uh, let's try to ask the simplest question. I mean, let's think that we are taking a profile for parental, so very nice profile. It can be um, we can we can even take we can even take um, a solution of Prandtl which is independent of x, right? So we 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 talked about the fact that <coughs> if you take Prandtl with uh, with data that is independent of x. I mean, we can even take the pressure to be zero. Okay, so I can I can take the simplest. What will be the simplest solution of Prandtl? The simplest solution of Prandtl. It can be u t minus u y y. Let me be consistent with my. Uh, oh, okay. Never mind. So le let me keep capital Y. So. This will be the simplest solution of Prandtl. I can take, I can take a solution of Prandtl of this type. Okay. Um, so this will I will call it U P of T Y. This is a solution of Prandtl. So this solves the heat equation, but with some funny boundary condition, right? So it's a profile that. It's really like it, it has some sort of self-similar behavior, but it's really a profile that ma goes from zero to some constant, which is this U Euler. I mean, if I don't have a pressure, it means that my U Euler is a constant, independent of x and t. So it can be just a constant number U bar, right? So so I have a U p that goes from zero to some U bar. Right, so this will be uh, u p at y equals zero is zero, and u p goes to some u bar when y goes to infinity. Right, so this will be like the simplest type of profile that you can write for Prandtl. And um, okay, I mean you can write it down explicitly. L l I mean the, the goal, my goal here is not to write it down explicitly. Um, <coughs> but this is this is a solution for Prandtl. 
this is a solution for parental that is um, it has even like you can write it down in a uh, in a self similar way i mean you can so <coughs> okay so usually this is what we call like a shear profile because it only depends on y you, you can choose it so that your up is monotone and it stays monotone and so on so so then it's very natural question to ask yourself take this guy take this guy plug it in in Navier-Stokes now this guy solves also Navier-Stokes by the way because it's independent of x it's independent of x so you can um, so the viscosity the 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 viscosity term in x will will vanish there I mean so <coughs> but if you perturb it what happens right so you want to perturb this guy and try to see whether this uh, still solves uh, yeah what happens if you perturb it okay so very natural question perturb this in Sobol F does it converge does it converge okay so very natural question um, take Navier Stokes oh, okay so l l l we'll be more working with rescaled Navier Stokes so this is uh, I will call this rescaled Navier Stokes. <coughs> so, um, so I, I want to take U bar solution of rescaled Navier Stokes with the initial data U bar at time capital T. which is this guy plus some small perturbation I mean, perturbation can be like new to some large power new to the power n And you ask yourself, uh, when u goes to zero, does this guy converge to this guy? Okay. Okay. Is that clear? The question is more or less clear. Okay, so let's. So the interesting thing is that this, this question itself is related to a very important question in stability and stability of um, Euler. Right? So I mean one of the main one of the main questions that people were looking at in the 19th century, and mostly physicists, but also uh, like arguments were, were mixed between physics and math like it's the stability of simple profiles and that's how for instance we have the very famous Rayleigh criteria for stability in Euler and it turns out that this particular question ha is related to, um, to, this, to, to, to the stability in um, in Euler. Okay. <coughs> yeah, shear flow. Yeah, yeah, shear flow. Okay. Now, um, so, so here, I, I mean, the the natural thing to do is to linearize. Of course, I mean, like, 
all, all what I'm saying here tells us that we have to linearize. So I, I'm asking the following question. I'm looking at this U Navier-Stokes. Um, my U Navier-Stokes, I want to write it as this U Prantol. Um, now the U Prantol is written in the with the time t. So if I go to the time capital T, then this will be square root of nu t x. Uh, sorry, y. Right. So as I said, this is this gives you an exact solution for Navier-Stokes, and you want to perturb it. Right? So the whole thing is that I want to, to write down um, the perturbation of this guy. OK? So then this will be, uh, let me call it plus some v. Maybe the notation is not very good because V, sometimes I'm using it there. So let me call it um, not V, but um, uh, any letter? H. H. OK. Let me call it H. So, <coughs> so then you ha we have to linearize. We have to linearize. So h, h, I will write it down as h l, for instance. Okay. So now uh, we have to linearize. So if we linearize, our h will solve what? h will solve plus. Uh, So my profile, so u p dx h plus So, so for this analysis, actually, for this analysis, I can replace this by, I can replace this by zero. So I can think about this U P as a fixed profile, um, because as of now, okay, now I should put capital T, capital X, okay, and all this is really in capital T, capital X, capital Y. So. Uh, so then, then now we are we are back to into very interesting questions about Euler itself. We start by looking at at problems related to Euler. So wh wh why is that? Um, I mean, the whole thing is really in in, in time scales. So when you look at this problem, first you can um, right, so maybe I, sh I should insist on exactly what we want to do precisely. So, we would like to prove, again, we would like to get the fact that Navier-Stokes converges to Prantor. So then it means that I want T to be of order 1. T of order 1 means capital T, or, or maybe small. Order 1 or even small, I, I don't care. It can be 1 over a million. Even if I prove some result, convergence of Navier-Stokes to Prentel on a very small time, I, I'll be happy. So then I want capital T to be 
um, 1 over square root of nu. Okay? So that's justify why I'm writing this like 0. I want to take t to be large, but large of this size. I want capital T to be large, but of this size. So then it still makes sense to replace this guy by 0. Right? I mean, it, it, one has to work a little bit, but so, so the whole thing in the new capital T, capital X, capital Y is to try to understand the li this linearized problem. Try to understand this linearized problem over times of this, of this size. So it's true that over times of this size, <coughs> you expect this term maybe to be at some, a little bit negligible at first approximation. It's not completely correct, but first it makes sense to try to first look at the problem without this guy. So then if you look at the problem without this guy, that's a very classical problem, which is the stability of Euler profiles, right? So that's how, we'll, how, we'll, that's how it goes. OK, now I'm going to derive OK, so again, so we have that linearized equation on H. OK, so let me do it step by step. I'm not going to get rid of the viscosity from now, but we'll do it in, two, in f first step. So when you look at this, now UP only depends on Y. And basically the question you want to ask is do you have growing modes for that linearized problem? Do you have growing modes for this linearized problem? So the idea is to do some Fourier analysis in x and time. So you do Laplace in time, Laplace in time and Fourier in x. Because like UP only depends on Y, right? So th that's why I wanted to replace square root of new T by zero so that there's no dependence in T and no dependence in X. So, so then it's very natural to try to find solutions which are some sort of exponential um, I alpha X minus CT. So, so what, what we'll be trying to do, of course now I, I should rem recall that H is divergence free. Okay, H is divergence free in, in our capital X, capital Y. So, <coughs> so then I have to look at H, I want to look at H of the form dy minus dx of some stream function psi, okay? And my psi of t, my psi of txy, my psi, I want to look at it in the form some profile, some function of y times So this is the form. Um, this is the form of the solution we want to to find, right? So alpha is uh, is coming from the Fourier in X, and alpha C it's a sort of um, sort of Laplace in time. Okay. So the question is. Um, can we find solutions 
um, where C has some imaginary part, right? Yeah, and of course, if you have one, you get the other actually. But, but yeah, so with the with the right sign, so that you get some growing mode. So you want to avoid that, huh? Normally, you want to avoid that. Oh, you are looking for it. I mean, depending on what you want to, depending on whether you are trying to prove the. So, so at the end, you are looking for it. <clears throat> yeah, at the end. Because like what? Uh, uh, but do you have example where you don't have that? Uh, I mean, uh, no. But the, yeah. But we, we'll see. The whole discussion now is that you will always uh, for for the nav for the Navier-Stokes part, you will always get something here for the even if the Euler doesn't have it, right? So that's the idea at the end. So 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 the the. Right, so, 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 so you're, it, it, it depends whether you want to prove the stability or the instability. So, so the result of uh, uh, Grenier, Gu, and Nguyen, they were uh, looking for, I mean, they were trying to prove the instability. So they were trying to find uh, this guy which has some imaginary part. So, um, Now, psi, what is the equation satisfied now by phi? Right? So we get some equation satisfied by phi. And um, so you plug in everything. You plug in everything. You get rid of the pressure. I mean, you get rid of the pressure by looking at the curl, right? So you take the curl. Uh, so take the curl so when you take the curl the equation will be written in terms of the vorticity and the vorticity the vorticity is is the Laplacian of I mean what you are seeing is the Laplacian of phi um, so curl of h, I can write down curl of h. Curl of h is the Laplacian of psi. Is what we are, the way we write it down is the second derivative minus a square phi times the exponential. That's that's the vorticity. Now the um, the equation the the equation that you get the equation that you get is the following. Uh, so I'm going to use the notation u u yeah okay or I can write keep it as u p u p minus c. R R is one over the viscosity. Okay. So so okay. M maybe as of now, let me not use R. Let me put it here as viscosity. Okay. Okay. So um, let let me just to to explain how the calculation goes. Like first. You do it, I do it like this. Let me put I alpha here. And then you divide by that. So, so I, uh, I mean, the way I wrote, what I wrote here is just exactly what you get. So for instance, the, 
the time derivative, the dt, um, the dt applied to the vorticity. So, so, so of course, now when, when you take the curl, when you take the curl, you get that you get that the Laplacian psi t plus u p dx Laplacian psi. Um, now you apply the curl there. Um, uh, one second. So the curl is. Um, Okay, I mean, you have to write it down right, but let me keep it like here. I mean, more or less, that's what you get. I'm just trying to explain the, the different terms. But the, um, the, ter the, the guy with C, that's coming from the time derivative. The guy with UP, that's the term there with the UP. And the term with the u w prime, that's the term coming from, from there, right? The, um, the i alpha, the i alpha, that's the x derivative. That's this guy. That's coming from the second component of the velocity. So you get this equation. And then what classically we do is that we divide by i alpha here and we replace we introduce the Reynolds number, and that's how we write it, 1 over i alpha r. So this equation is very well known in, in the study of stability of Navier-Stokes. So uh, as of now, these are questions not necessarily related to Prentor. The, the, the problem, as I'm writing it here, um, is more like stability of Navier-Stokes. I mean, you can just ignore Prentor completely. And this equation has the name of or sommerfeld <coughs> And this equation, um, if, you take, if you take the limit r goes to infinity, I mean, more precisely, it's alpha r goes to infinity. So if you look at what happens when alpha r goes to infinity, when alpha r goes to infinity, this term disappears. And then you end up with this equation, which has another name, which is the Rayleigh equation. This is Rayleigh. This, when you add this guy, it becomes or sommerfeld Now, or sommerfeld is a fourth order equation in Y. Right? Really is second order, but it is singular. It is singular when this guy vanishes. I mean, depending on where is C. So if C is in the range of UP, then this becomes uh, this becomes singular. Okay. Of course now this um, the question the study of the Rayleigh operator, the Orr-Sommerfeld, there is a huge literature on this, uh, mostly like in physics. And <coughs> so the question is, do we have solutions? Do we have solutions with, um, do we have solution with imaginary part of C positive? Okay, because if you, uh, okay, so assume, assume we have a solution with imaginary part of C positive. Okay, let's assume that for, for the, uh, okay, l l let me first do it for, 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 for the Rayleigh. So assume the Rayleigh, assume Rayleigh has a solution, assume, so basically, assume that UP is an unstable profile for Euler. Okay. 
Assume UP is an unstable profile for Euler. Actually, what I'm saying here is goes back really to the work of Grenier. I mean, then there were a lot of... So assume that UP is an unstable profile for Euler. What does that imply? That implies that the equation, this equation, you can find a C, which imagine a part positive, and a phi that will solve uh, the Rayleigh equation. Okay? So then what we get, we have a phi with some value alpha and with a C. We have a phi and alpha and a C with imaginary part of C positive. Okay? That solve, um, solves really. Really meaning the, the, the problem without this guy. Then it's not very difficult. I mean, it's not completely trivial, but it is not very difficult to do some perturbative argument to introduce a so-called sublayer, some viscous sublayer, actually of size uh, new to the power three quarter. But somehow it's not difficult to construct something similar, but for Navier-Stokes. R mean depends on the Reynolds number. So you can, you can more or less construct things like this, where CR is more or less same as C. Right? You move, you move a little bit. This C moves a little bit by something which is of size 1 over R. Right? You can make it, like if you take R very large, if you take R very large, this is perturbative. This term is perturbative. It's true, it's, it's a singular. It's a fourth order, so it's a singular perturbation. But, but somehow you start from this, from the, what we call an unstable profile for Euler. You, pr you perturb the unstable profile for Euler. You get some sort of unstable profile for the or Sommerfeld. And there is some work to be done, but it's not very difficult. So, but then your CR is more or less like C. I mean, it's more or less C plus 1 over R. But then you keep the imaginary part away from 0. Now, what's the conclusion of this? So here, I'm starting with some unstable profile for Euler. So what's the conclusion? So if we try to go back here, the conclusion is the following. You come back and <coughs> what do we have? We have a solution for the linearized equation. We have a solution of the, for the linearized equation that looks like, I mean the phi depends on r, but we have this sort of profile. We have exponential i alpha x and then I have exponential minus i alpha cr t. So now if I go back to the tx y variable, if I go back to if I go back to tx y, what do I get? I get phi r capital Y is what? Is But we said the imaginary part 
the imaginary part of CR is bounded from below. I mean, it's in the, I mean like it's, it's a number. So, so basically what we have here, we have a frequency in X. So the frequency in X, so the frequency in X is like alpha over square root of nu. And the growth in time The growth in time is like alpha imaginary part of CR 1 over square root of nu. Okay? And it's exponential. It's exponential of this times t. Right? So if you are in a situation like this, the only way you can get estimates that you are in analytic regularity. If you want to prove some sort of convergence in some, some analytic and in, in some functional space, this will require, this requires analytic, right? So this requires analytic. So this will require analytic regularity. I mean, like if you are not analytic, if you are not analytic, I mean, you, you have like these are going, I mean, when, when u goes to zero, this, these are becoming higher and higher frequency. And the growth is, I mean, I mean it's, it's like you have something, it's, it's like you have something like this, i x c exponential c t, right? If you have if you have something behaving like this with some constant in front, I mean with this sor sort of constant. If you have something behaving like this, the only way, the only way you can control such kind of things that you need to be in, in analytic regularity, right? Because you have this growth. So your initial data should have should have the same decay initially, so you should be like some constant times xi. So if, you, if your initial data has this behavior on the Fourier side, even though you get this growth, but for short time, for short time, this will, will kill this growth. Right? So that's why you need to be in analytic regularity. Okay? Okay, so. <coughs> So this is if UP is unstable for Euler. Now, what if UP is stable? So if UP is stable, then um, you don't have these guys. So um, so all, all solutions of this type will only happen if solution of this type only happen if C is imaginary part of C is zero, right? Now, <coughs> now if we think that, um, Now the whole discussion, the whole discussion is uh, what, okay, so if we are stable, then, then if we have, if we have what we call like embedded eigenvalues, they will have imaginary part of C zero. So then formally, if I, s if I think that CR is like C plus one over R, of course, I mean, this is to be checked. If I think that that happens, then I come here, then my CR will be, this CR will be, let's say, the, the imaginary part will be 1 over R. Then this guy will be bounded. Then 
it may make sense to think that this will work in Sobolev regularity, right? If, if I am able to prove, if I am able to prove that this logic is correct, like CR is C plus 1 over R, uh, then we, sh we can expect that we have result in Sobolev. But it's really that conclusion which is wrong, right? So th th this is not true. This is not true. Meaning that uh, it's a little bit, it's, it's, a very, it, it's, it's in a sense counterintuitive. Counter it's very counterintuitive because what you are saying here, what we are saying here is that you take this equation, which is the inviscid guy. And of course, there are boundary conditions that I didn't write. Like the two equations do not have the same boundary conditions. But you take this guy. This is stable. So you only have, um, you only have solution with imaginary part of C0. You perturb it. You perturb it and then you start getting a growing mode and growing mode even with a CR which is much larger than 1 over R. Okay. Any questions about this? Okay. So let let's let's let me try to let me try to explain a little bit, but um, maybe Maybe I will not go into the whole, um, I, I will not go into the detail because I want to, to state a few other things. But th there is a whole construction that is, um, I will not give the, the, cons the whole construction, but I, I want to, it, it, it's, more, it's more like an ODE construction. And if we think about it, I mean, it's, it's really, we are talking about ODEs at the end, right? Singular ODEs, right? So, so, so the question, you, you start with some, and actually, actually the whole construction uses, uh, um, uses three small parameters, uses three small parameters, um, which are alpha, C, and the viscosity, okay? And it uses a lot of property of airy functions. But at the end, at the end, without really trying to go into the whole detail, at the end, we end up with some profile, phi r, alpha r, CR, where um, CR is some sort of C infinity. C infinity is the guy which, is, which has imaginary part 0 plus some big O of alpha R minus 1 third. I mean, as I said, the, 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 right, the right parameter that you look at is uh, look at alpha r going to infinity. Okay, so that's really the guy that you get at the end after the, this ODE construction. So this, is, this work here is going from a profile like this for Euler to this one. This is singular ODE. And it has to do with uh, airy, airy functions. It's, it's, it's not a trivial thing. Um, at the formal level, it was done since like the 40s by uh, Tolmian and Chishtin. Uh, but then at the, rigorous, at the rigorous level, that's the work of Grenier, Go, and Nguyen to construct really a growing mode for uh, for the Navier-Stokes. Now, um, 
what does that imply? Um, of course, then there is also, uh, right, so, so now th there is also a question about what is alpha as a function of R, and that depends on the type of profile that you are looking at. So there is another discussion about what is alpha of R. I mean, this depends on the type of profile that you are looking at for, for Euler, uh, uh, on UP. Um, but somehow, somehow their construction at the end, it shows that, it shows that, what does it show? I mean, if we go back here, if we go, go back here, then this guy is alpha r minus one third. Um, I mean, one can work out this, uh, and somehow this will require some Jouvry regularity. Okay, I mean, one can work out what is Jouvry regularity required. Okay. I mean, basically, their work is to prove that there exists one guy that one growing mode in some Jouvry regularity. Now, on the positive side, on the positive side, uh, we have a paper with um, with David Gerard Vare and Yasunuri Yasu Mayakawa, where I and mean, I don't want to go into the detail about what are the real assumptions that we have to impose on the profile. So there are. There are assumptions that one has to impose on the profile. But we have a few different results depending on assumptions on the profile. We can prove, so this is with uh, David, uh, with Gerard Vare, Mayakawa, myself. So depending on assumptions on the profile, we prove that Navier-Stokes converges to Prantor in Jouvry regularity. So this is like the first result, the first convergence result that do not require analyticity. Right, so that's the first convergence result that doesn't require analyticity. Um, and in, in the, I mean like here what I mean depending on the profile, uh, I mean, we can also allow the profile to depend on T, X, I mean there are a few, uh, X, X, I mean, that's, we hope to be able to do it. That's not yet done completely. But, um, but in the best case, we can really match exactly the, the growth of Grunier, Gu, and Guyen. So we can really get the result which is really sharp. So the Jouvry space is sharp with, uh, with sharp with sharp space, w with sharp regularity, or wi with sharp uh, Jevre class, which is like three halves. I mean, the best case, we get the sharp Jevre class three halves. Okay. Okay, so this is a type of result that I wanted to mentioned about the validity 
the validity of Prentor. And um, again, for me, the important thing here, the important thing is somehow this sort of destabilizing effect of the viscosity. Um, but that was already like understood physically, like since the 40s, more or less. Any, any questions about this? I mean, I will not go into how these results are proved, but, um, but, but somehow, somehow um, in this result, we use a lot of, we use a lot of the work of, I mean, here I'm, 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 I'm maybe I'm saying, oh, okay, this is singular ODE, but uh, I mean, here there is a lot of work, by the way, like it's, it's a very precise, it's a very precise construction based on what they call Rayleigh airy iteration. So they have to construct a very precise object. I mean, these guys, they, they have to construct a very precise object based on some, what they call Rayleigh airy iteration. But, I mean, be, more or less, I mean, the idea here is that they, are, they have to choose in a very particular way some alpha and some C, right? Alpha and C, again, alpha is like the Fourier in X, C is like Laplace or Fourier in time, and then they have to choose a very particular value so they, they choose a very particular value for which they can make a construction. And they prove that the element they construct here, the element they construct here has the growth of that Jouvray three halves. Now, our work is more or less to say we have to, we have to look at everything and prove that this guy is the worst guy, right? So that's more or less how our proof also inspired from their construction, but it's slightly more general because you have to, you have to understand what happens everywhere in, in the Fourier-Laplace uh, space, okay? So that's really the idea of the two proofs in few sentences. But, but each one of the papers is like 70 or 80 pages. So it's, it's always like whole constructions and so on. <coughs> but but, but at, the end, at the end, it's like some ODE techniques. Like it's, it's really some uh, important interesting ODE techniques. Okay, so this is about the validity of Prentor. So now let me talk about a little bit about uh, uh, blow up for Prentor. I mean, I, I, I don't have a lot to say about blow up for Prentor, so that's why I'm not taking too much time for that. But okay, so these are whole program that we started with um, So I'm not going to give really precise results, but I'm just going to say what we are able to do as of now. So this is a program we started with uh, Charles Collot, Taj Ghul, and Slim Ibrahim. So the question we want to understand is, uh, can we describe the blow up for Prentor, for the evolution Prentor? So now I forget Navier-Stokes and I want to understand the blow up for Prentor. Of course, I mean, if we are really interested in Navier-Stokes itself, then blow up for Prentor is not the goal. 
because if you have a blow up for parental, it means that your approximation from navier stokes to parental is already has already a problem. And it means that uh, parental was not the good model to start with. And that's how other more involved models were uh, discussed in the physics literature. Uh, as of now, mathematically, we still don't have a very good uh, theory. L let me just mention names about models, but there are at least, there is so-called triple deck model interaction boundary layer. I mean, the, these things here, the idea about these things, and it's related really also to the type of blow up we, we think to construct for uh, parental itself. The idea about either of these is that, so here you have parental, here you have Euler. In the derivation, you remember that Euler talks to Prentor. Euler talks to Prentor through the boundary, the, the, the boundary condition at infinity. But somehow Prentor doesn't talk to Euler when we do the Prentor system. Interaction boundary, the interaction boundary layer is like another slightly more sophisticated model where you allow the Prentor to talk to the Euler, right, in some not very complicated way, but I mean, there is a different model, different scaling that you use. And, but uh, this is still not very, very well justified. And it turned out, I mean, for me, that's interesting is that the type of blow up we are trying to prove for Prentor, they, they more or less, it's something that is shooting to infinity, right? So somehow the, the type of blow up we are, even like numerically, this is what is seen. Like in the blow-ups for Prentor, what is seen is that you get something like that. Like you get some singularity on the whole line that goes to infinity. So it, it means that there is some information that is being ejected. So it, it makes sense that one tries to look at uh, this kind of models. Um, we still don't know how to do all this, but, but at least the blow up we are proving for parental is of that nature. On the, uh, on the segment, you mean? Uh, no, no, I mean like, let's say this is the point in X where you have, so, sorry, so this is the point in X where you get the blow up, but in Y, the point in Y, the point Y star where the blow, wh where, where you are reaching the maximum, is a point that is going to infinity. Of course, now the, 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 the I mean, the, there is like sort of plateau here that forms where you are reaching your maximum, which is going to infinity, but that thing is going to infinity also. So, 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 so if you think about the problem locally in Y, you are not really seeing a blow up, it's bounded. So I mean, it's, it's a blow up that is going to infinity, okay? But, but what I find interesting, I, I, I didn't really see it precisely, but I guess physicists, they, they have it in mind, I'm sure. But, but um, that is what is behind this kind of models. Like the, the derivation of Prentel itself, the derivation of Prentel itself is based on the fact that such kind of things can, are not happening. So it's true that if this is happening, then you expect to go to a model like that. Okay. But now, if we are just interested in Prentol, we forget about Navier Stokes. I mean, we can just study it, study what are the type of blow up and so on. But for me, like the next step is what does that mean for Navier Stokes? How can we improve? How can we improve the, um, the approximation? I mean, how, how can we pr improve the, the, the parental model itself? 
But these are still, I think, we are still uh, far from understanding this, this kind of things. And this is even more complicated. The triple deck has like different, different sub-layers. Um, OK, now the results we have, so I, I just take five minutes and I'll tell you the, the results we have as of now. So, um, so we have a f first result. Um, So the first result is the first result is a result that only studies what happens um, in the odd case. If we are odd in X, so if we are odd in X, we can reduce the. It turns out that if you are odd in X and you look at C of T Y equal minus U X I mean, it's, it's an interesting observation if you are odd in X and you look at the derivative at the vertical axis then you can write a closed equation you get a closed equation you get a closed equation on C. So somehow you re instead now of having a problem in uh, two dimensions, it becomes a one dimension problem. And it was already observed by E and Enquist that this equation on C in some particular setup blows up. But they got the blow up, so this is a paper by E. Enquist. This equation blows up. I mean, the equation is more or less something like this, dtx um, something like this. Always forget the signs, but I think. And of course, depending, I mean, if you put a pressure for Euler, you can get the pressure for Euler. But, but you see, this is really in the spirit of uh, parabolic equations, but with this funny term. And actually, this funny term really completely changes the type of blow up you have. Right? So this is really, this funny term is like that non-local guy that is pushing things to infinity. So here the, the blow up is not really as in the heat, uh, as in the semi-linear heat equation where it is concentrated in one point, but here it's really uh, something going to infinity, right? So that really changes completely the picture. So then we have a result about this. So, so basically we, we in, in this paper, we can justify the profile here. So that's one first result. So then we have two other results. Um, with uh, Charles and uh, Tej. The first result is studying uh, Berger's equation. So Berger's equation means that you take Prandtl, but you, you get rid of the viscosity and you get rid of the y variable, right? And then Berger's, and, but then we also study the Berger's with vertical, we also study this model. So this is Berger with vertical viscosity, with viscosity in y. So we can study blow up here and uh, um, I mean so whole constructions and so on. So we are we are able to do that, and so maybe two. And then the third thing we are able now to do is also to do the inviscid 
the implicit parental and there is a whole literature about the implicit I mean not whole literature but there is an important paper by Hunter and uh, uh, Wong uh, and uh, Huang on the implicit parental like the fact that this is locally well post even in Sobolev. It turns out that this equation is locally well post in Sobolev, and we can study the blow up here. Now, the next step is to put everything together, but that's still under, under work. Okay, let me stop here.